Hi, everyone. I'm Katharina Pfeffer, and I'm very happy to present our work, which is a replication of stories as informal lessons about security. This is joint work with Alexandra May, Edgar Weipel, Emily Rada, and Katharina Krumpholz. All right. Um, today, people without any security background are often forced to take security critical decisions like, for instance, whether to update a software, click on a link, or which password to choose. Now, usually people do learn from their experience how to make good or better choices, but security threats are often subtle and can usually not be noticed easily. However, people can learn from security stories. So from hearing or reading about security threats that happen to somebody else, like for instance, a friend, a family member, or a coworker. Radar et al. were the first that looked into security stories in depth in 2012, where they did a study with undergraduate students to check which characteristics of security stories lead to changes in thinking and behavior. Um, we really loved the work and we replicated it, this time with a more diverse sample with participants from all age groups and educational backgrounds. And our main aim was to test whether the results are still valid today and also whether they are valid for a broader population. We reused the original questionnaire with open-ended and closed-ended questions. Um, we started with some general questions to train the memory of the people and make it easier for them to remember security stories. And then they had to choose one story where they could remember the details best and had to answer the rest of the questionnaire, which were multiple choice and open questions just in relation to this story. Finally, after they finished the whole questionnaire and thought a lot about the story, we asked them to tell the story as if they would tell it to a friend in their own words and also with as much detail as possible. For data analysis, we used uh, qualitative inductive coding for the full stories and the open questions, as well as regression models to compare our data to the RADA study and also to check for differences in the demographics. Here you can see the threat categories that emerged from our qualitative coding, which were actually the same as in the radar study, so we could um, find all the categories again, which I think is great. And we also found two new categories, which were data breaches and ransomware, which are threats that mainly emerged in the last decade. Our participants reported several behavior changes, which they did after hearing the story, where the most reported was that they were more aware and cautious when using the internet, followed by changing password security practices, like for instance, using more secure passwords or changing the password more often, updating software or using more secure software, monitoring accounts and credit card charges, or uh, backing up data, which was usually mentioned after hearing a story about ransomware, or even something as extreme as totally quitting Facebook or credit card usage. Finally, some reported that they stopped connecting to insecure Wi-Fi's. So uh, we saw that uh, the stories really led to behavior changes. They also reported that they used um, specific tools or services specifically after hearing the story, where the most commonly tool was antivirus or secure software, which again was the same as in the original study. Others like second factor authentication and VPNs were only found in our study, probably again because they mainly gained popularity in the last years. Our participants also mentioned that they learned distrust from stories very often, which unfortunately also frequently led to helplessness and didn't really have any positive effect. 
only if a very concrete action, like for instance, monitoring credit card charges was presented, then uh, the participants actually learned something. And this we explain with related work on how people learn from fear, which says that learning from fear is only effective if a very concrete action is presented. Then finally, people also often started to educate themselves or others after hearing the story. For our regression model, we first um, replicated the regression models of the original study, where we checked which characteristics of the stories um, change thinking and behavior. And there, we think again that it's a very great outcome that we found nearly the same results as in the original study. So we can really say that that adds some more validity. We found that stories are generally likely to change thinking and behavior when they contain a lesson, like something you should never or always do. When they contain serious threats or make the participants anxious or angry, which we explain with the negativity bias that people are usually more um, aware of negative events than of positive ones. Stories that are autobiographical, where the person that told the story is the same one to whom it actually happened, as well as stories that come from a knowledgeable source, where we think that uh, those both characteristics make stories more credible. Then we also did some additional regression models to check for differences in demographics, where the most interesting finding was that Younger people are less likely to rate the seriousness of threats severe or to get angry about stories. And higher educated people are less likely to report a change in thinking in general or be emotionally affected by stories. And here we think that probably younger people who grew up in the digital society already heard a lot about security threats and are thus less likely surprised by stories. However, we still found that they are largely affected by security stories. So, uh, summed up, we uh, think that our study um, adds a lot of validity to the radar study and shows that the results are still largely valid today across different demographics and educational backgrounds. And uh, we do think that media articles and security trainings can benefit from our results by then focusing on stories with concrete actions and serious threats to the individual. And generally, we suggest that it would be great to just make people share the security incidents more. Like, for instance, we had the idea to make an online platform for people to, show, to share stories, which could then serve as a pool for media articles or security trainings. And also in work environments, we think it would be very good to make meetings which are just dedicated to sharing security stories, because we found that many people reported that they shared the story because it fitted the conversation. So we think that just bringing up the topic can already help a lot. And finally, we think that security stories should be considered as an important source next to, for security advice, next to um, personal experience and security trainings. All right, that brings me to the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take questions.